that there are some teachers that they really, you just have to show them once and they go. And then there are some teachers that never in a lifetime will they be able to adopt. And, and we just have to accept and we have to respect that. But that middle lot, that 60% in the middle, those are the people that we can work with and that we must help and patiently take by the hand. You see these shows in TV? I know here in South Africa, especially late night. Then they've got these, uh, they selling these products. And, and you know what? People buy them. They buy them. They buy lots of it. These pitchmen are extremely successful. They make you some, they make you buy something that you don't want and that you don't need and that you're never going to use. But they're very successful in convincing you. Now, what are the lessons that we can learn from pitchmen to convince our teachers? They don't want to buy the concept. They're scared of it. They don't like it. But we know it's good for them. And we know what's good for our learners. So what are the lessons that we can learn from these pitchmen? Most great innovations are disruptive. And how do you persuade people to disrupt their lives? You have to explain the invention to them. Not once or twice, but three or four times with a different twist each time. You have to show them exactly how it works and why it works. And make your, them follow your hands as you chop the onions with it and then tell them precisely how it fits into their routine. And finally, sell them on the paradoxical fact that, revolutionary as the gadget is, it is not hard to use. Apply. The first part, most great innovations are disruptive. I think the first thing that we need to do is that when we introduce computers in a school or a whiteboard in a class, we must recognize the fact that it is going to disrupt the life of the teacher. They're not used to it, they've never used it before, they don't like it, or they may not like it, they don't know how to, how to relate to it. It is a disrupt, disruption. It's not business as usual. You take them out of their comfort zone. You force them into a world of technology where they don't want to be. So we have to acknowledge that. And not just push them, but acknowledge that this is going to be hard for them. Right. Now, how do you, the next question just is, how do you persuade people to disrupt their lives? Well, you have to explain the concept. Now, explain is a very simple word. But what does explain actually mean? If you Google explain, you just say explain definition. You get pages and pages of definitions that are given you. I've just gone to Google and I took the first page and I took two of the definitions. And these are the two definitions. Let me go through that phrase by phrase. To make flat or to smooth out. You've got this thing, yeah, this, uh, uh, I can't make any sense of it. You smooth it for them. You make it flat so that it, it's, a, it's a surface that they can understand. Then you go to the next part and you unfold or you make it visible. There's lots of hidden things with technology that you can't see. You know, you, you, you teach them one thing, but this, now this doesn't work. And then what's hidden underneath the surface? So you unfold it for you, unpack the whole thing for them. It goes on, it says, you give a sufficiently detailed report. Sufficiently detailed. So you see, if, explain is not just telling them, giving them a sufficiently detailed report. About what? About, well, three things I mentioned here. The reason for something. Now, why is this thing necessary? Why do we need to use it? Why are we introducing a whiteboard into the classroom where you had a perfectly good black one? Then the next one is how something works. To give them a bit of background behind the scenes. How does it work? How, why does it work? What is the reasoning behind the technology so they can get some understanding? And then, uh, this part, how the elements in the system interact. The system, in the case of a teacher, the, the system in which he works is the classroom. So this piece of technology, how would this interact with the rest of the classroom? How would that, this interact with the tasks that the teacher normally performs? And then, how to do something. Now, then you see, quite often, when we train teachers, we only focus on that part, how to do it. That's where you press the buttons. That's how you write on the board. That's how you. But, but that is really something that comes at the end. They must first be convinced that this is really good for me to have this thing. Then the second definition here, yeah, it says, make clear the reasons for, 
all the basic principles of, so once again, it focuses on the reasons, to make intelligible. In other words, they must, their intellect must grab it. It must not just be something you tell them and show them and over and done. They must, they must grasp it intellectually. And then the explanation might involve relating the unfamiliar to the more familiar. Unfamiliar, I've never worked with a computer before. Familiar, I have handwritten my test paper, or I've typed it on a typewriter, or I've given it to somebody to type. That's familiar. Unfamiliar is a word processor. I've never used a word processor before. So how do you relate the two? You start to say, well, this is what you do with your hands. Now you can do the same here, but you can also save it for next year. So now it's an added advantage. So you move from the familiar to the unfamiliar. An interactive whiteboard. What can you do on a blackboard? Oh, you can write on it. That is familiar. And you can erase. That's familiar. Now you can do the same on the whiteboard. But you can do more. You can save it. And you can use it tomorrow again. And so progressively you move from the unfamiliar to the familiar. Now, this is a long story just to talk about one word, and that is explain. We think explain is simple, and we think that we just tell them that's enough. Believe me, it is not enough, not even to a teacher. How many times do we have to do this? It says not once or twice, but three or four times. And I think that is still conservative. Five or six or seven or eight or ten or a dozen times, it doesn't matter it, how many times it takes until the penny drops and the teacher understands why this piece of technology should be used. But of course, you just can't tell them the same thing over and over. You, then you can just well give them a, a record and they, they play it every time with a different twist each time. And that is what the pitch man does. Now, if you if we take everything we have so far, the pitch man says, now this thing here, it will change your life, it will disrupt your life, but it will improve your life. And he explains, this is how it works, and this is what it does, and, and, but every time it's with a different twist. And he says the same thing over and over, but just from a different angle. And this is what we have to do when we teach and train our teachers, is to show them the different aspects of it. Now, with technology, that is simple, because with technology is so diverse, and there are so many angles and shades to it, um, that it lends itself perfectly to this. You have to show them exactly how it works. Don't just tell them about it, show them exactly how it works. But more importantly, show them why it works. Why is this better than what they had before? Follow your hands. Now, this is the one point where you, have, where you mustn't follow the pitch man. Because the pitch man will never let you do something. He's got the slicer and he practiced for years. He's practiced, practiced. And he slices. It takes a lot of practice to do it. And you take the thing home and you can't do it. So he will never, there on the show, allow you to do it. But of course, with technology, is different. With a whiteboard, give the pen or take with a finger and you start writing. Let the teachers feel it. Let, they, let them experience it. Let them get their hands dirty with the technology so that they can start relating to it. Tell them precisely how it fits into their routine. Tell them precisely. It must not, it must unam unambiguously tell them this is how it fits in. This is what you do in the class and this is what you do with a computer. You do the fractions, this little piece of program, that's what you use in the computer lab. On the interactive whiteboard, there's a little thing there that will make fractions easy for your learners to understand. So you must tell exactly how it fits into their routine. And then you must sell them to this, this paradox that it is revolutionary. You know, it is not just something simple. It is really revolutionary. It is new. It is state of the art. It's, it's wonderful. But at the same time, it is not hard to use. It is a simple thing to use. Now, if you look at all that, there's one little paragraph. That's what makes a pitch man successful. And that is what can make us successful in training our teachers. It's not a simple thing. It's not a one-time event. You can't just herd a lot of teachers into a room, give them a presentation, and now assume that they will go away and understand. That is a terrible assumption. You, 
can't just give teachers technology and assume that they will use it. It's a wrong assumption. It won't happen like that. It takes time, it takes patience. We're taking people out of their comfort zone, we're putting them into a new environment. We believe it's good for our learners, uh, but the teachers don't share that vision. And that 60%, that middle lot that you saw, it can take anything between a, three, a year and five years for teachers to make that shift in their minds. It's not an intellectual thing. It's more a thing of the heart. And how do they feel about it? And when will they feel comfortable in doing that?